Chances are you probably already have a Google Analytics account, but are you making use of these most commonly overlooked features? What are these commonly overlooked features, you ask? Tune into this episode and I'll tell you exactly what they are and how you can set them up so they can take advantage of them. All right, let's move on to Google Analytics. I'm assuming most of us have got this installed, yeah, so I'm not gonna breeze into this to go through the installation steps. A couple of new things Google Analytics has released lately. Uh, something called Google Signals. I think it's still in the beta. I'm not sure if it's across everyone's account. If you're advertising, Google will give you access to it. Um, but essentially what this is, it's one button, turn it on. Um, this is going to give you now cross device tracking capability. Someone looks at your website on a mobile phone, they put the mobile phone down, they go back to their website, they continue browsing, it will attribute those sessions together before they used to be separated out and consider it as two different sessions across two different users. Now it will centralize it. Um, you will be able to get things like demographic and interest tracking, age, uh, even language, and that is pulling it out of people's Google accounts. Most of the internet is typically signed into a Google account when they're using Chrome. It's like one of the default things now. It'll pull all that profiling information out and then give it to you in your analytics so you can then get more interest and segmentation based information from your analytics, not just cold hard numbers. All you gotta do is switch it on, that's it. Um, second thing, now that you have Search Console set up, you will then wanna integrate Search Console into Google Analytics. This will give you more detailed organic search information into your analytics account, which you can use for filtering and get better insights and information on how your website is actually truly performing. Number two, if you have a relatively large website or if your website has got a site search, um, if you've got a blog and you're doing a lot of blogging, this is really a mandatory thing in my opinion, turn on search tracking. So basically what this will do is it will track every query and keyword that you use as then searching in your website. You can then take that information out and then get an understanding of, okay, what content, what information, uh, what questions am I failing to answer on my website? Because obviously my users having to search it, they can't find it. This will help you better inform future growth and even your content marketing efforts in your business as a result. Number four, and in my opinion, the most important thing to do in analytics is to configure conversion tracking. Uh, you might have remembered back on this slide, this beautiful colored boxes here. You want to now go through and build in that conversion tracking into uh, your goal report into analytics. So that way you can then see uh, if you're hitting these conversion KPIs and where are these conversion KPIs are originating and coming from. Uh, I always use the custom goal setup. I find it's a lot easier and faster. Uh, you go through, basically, if we want to track someone landing on that demo thank you page after they signed up for a demo, we choose a uh, destination goal type. We, all we got to do is put in that back of the URL there. That's it. Save it. Bang. It's done. Simple as that. So easy, right? Then finally, once you've configured this, this is an issue with Google Analytics. I don't know if they'll ever fix it. Hopefully one day they will. Once you set these goals, and if you go in and even do things like uh, data filtering, once it's set, it's permanent. There's no undo button. So if you screw it up, then you go, it's, it's not the end of the world. You're just gonna have a really ugly looking analytics account. So once you've got the basics set up, then I recommend you create three views. You create a backup view, and you do not touch that view once you've set it up. Leave it there, never touch it. Then you also then create a testing view. So if you're looking to do things like filtering or got advanced goal setups, do it in there first, check that it actually works, then apply it to your working production view, yeah? So there you have it. That's how you can configure Google Analytics the correct way. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please like it, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding Google Analytics. If you need any help with Google Analytics and growing your business, please check out my digital agency, Web3. I'm James Banks from Web3, and I'll see you in the next episode.